Good morning, everyone. Today's Mass is offered for Bennett, Crin, and Hutkins families. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Samuel. An informant came to David with the report, the children of Israel have transferred their loyalty to Absalom. At this, David said to all his servants who were with him in Jerusalem, up, let us take flight, or none of us will escape from Absalom. Leave quickly, lest he hurry and overtake us then visit disaster upon us and put the city to the sword. As David went up the Mount of Olives, he wept without ceasing. His head was covered and he was walking barefoot. All those who were with him also had their heads covered and were weeping as they went. As David was approaching Behurim, a man named Shimei, the son of Jirah, of the same clan as Saul's family, was coming out of the place, cursing as he came. He threw stones at David and at all the king's officers, even though all the soldiers, including the royal guard, were on David's right and on his left. Shimei was saying as he was cursed, away, away, you murderous and wicked man. The Lord has requited you for all the bloodshed in the family of Saul, in whose steed you became king, and the Lord has given over the kingdom to your son, Absalom. And now you suffer ruin because you are a murderer. Abishai, son of Zeruiah, said to the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Let me go over, please, and lop off his head. But the king replied, What business is it of mine or yours, sons of Zeruiah, that he curses? Suppose the Lord has told him to curse David. Who then will dare to say, Why are you doing this? Then the king said to Abishah and to all his servants, If my own son who came forth from my loins is seeking my life, how much more might this Benjaminite do so? Let him alone and let him curse, for the Lord has told him to. Perhaps the Lord will look upon my affliction and make it up to me with benefits for the curses he is uttering this day. 
David and his men continued on the road, while Shimei kept abreast of them on the hillside, all the while cursing and throwing stones and dirt as he went. The word of the Lord. Lord, rise up and save me. Lord, rise up and save me. O oh Lord, how many are my adversaries? Many rise up against me. Many are saying of me, there is no salvation for him in God. Lord, rise up and save me. But you, O oh Lord, are my shield, my glory. You lift up my head. When I call out to the Lord, he answers me from his holy mountain. Lord, rise up and save me. When I lie down in sleep, I wake again, for the Lord sustains me. I fear not the myriads of people arrayed against me on every side. Lord, rise up and save me. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples came to the other side of the sea, to the territory of the Gennesarens. When he got out of the boat, at once a man from the tombs who had an unclean spirit met him. The man was dwelling among the tombs, and no one could restrain him any longer, even with a chain. In fact, he frequently had been bound in shackles and chains, but the chains had been pulled apart by him and the shackles smashed, and no one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day, among the tombs and on the hillsides, he was always crying out and bruising himself with stones. Catching sight of Jesus from a distance, he ran up and prostrated himself before him, crying out in a loud voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I adjure you, by God, do not torment me. He asked him, What is your name? He replied, Legion is my name, for there are many of us. And he pleaded earnestly with him to not drive them away from that territory. Now a large herd of swine was feeding there on the hillside, and they pleaded with him, Send us into the swine. Let us enter them. And he let them, and the unclean spirit came, spirits came out and entered the swine. The herd, about 200, rushed down a steep bank into the sea, and they were drowned. The swine herds ran away and reported the incident in the town throughout the countryside, and people came out to see what had happened. As they approached Jesus, they caught sight of the man who had been possessed by Legion, sitting there clothed and in his right mind. And they were seized with fear, those who witnessed the incident explained to them what happened to the possessed man and to the swine. Then they began to beg him to leave their district. As he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed pleaded with him, but 
to remain with him. But Jesus did not permit him, but told him instead, Go home to your family and announce to them all that the Lord has done in pity for you. The man went off and began to proclaim in the Decropolis what Jesus had done for him, and all were amazed. The Gospel of the Lord. In the first reading from the book, the second book of Samuel, we hear how King David is being tormented by this man who is reminding him of his sin. Notice how David has a very interesting response to this tormentor. He does not charge his servant to lop off his head, as was suggested, but rather, King David finds and relies on the presence of God, even in the midst of this suffering, this public embarrassment that is coming upon him. That's a great reminder for us. Whenever we deal with something that is painful, embarrassing, something that causes us harm, we want to get rid of that right away. We want to fix that situation so we don't have to deal with whatever it is that causing, it's causing us pain or suffering. Depending upon the situation, that's an appropriate response. But what King David does in this particular example is that he relies on the presence of God. And that, my brothers and sisters, is a wonderful example for us. Some problems, some challenges, some pains, we can't just simply get rid of. We can't just simply erase. But what each and every one of us can do is to find and to rely on the presence of God in our lives. And that is really what this man does in the gospel, this man tormented by legion. He has been suffering as a result of this demonic possession. And after this encounter with Jesus, he is in his right mind. He is made whole again. That is what happens when we encounter Christ in faith, when we turn to him. And so today is like every day, we deal with various challenges, various things that we wish we didn't have to deal with. We know that even in the midst of those realities, we can rely on, turn to, and deepen our faith in Jesus Christ. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. Through Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands and endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and to manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, our Mother of Sorrows, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles, with blessed Grimwald, Santa Maria, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. Through Christ our Lord. It's great to have our students here from Catholic schools, our Catholic school here at Holy Cross, as we begin Catholic Schools Week. So this is a great week for them and, and for our entire parish community. Uh, we will have Mass with Bishop Matano this coming Thursday at uh, 9 o'clock. So I invite you to, to join us for that as we celebrate Catholic Schools Week. That Mass will be here 9 o'clock this coming Thursday. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Have a great day, everyone.